Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of the C++ vector. So what is a vector? A vector is kind of like an array that can grow and shrink as you need it to as your program executes. It is not fixed in size as standard arrays are. So in the video, I'm going to show you how to define a vector, how to add values to your vector, how to access the values in the vector, how to initialize the vector in various ways, and how to pass vectors to functions. And I'll give you an example or two of processing a vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. And so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to add our vectors by having a include, okay? So vectors are not built in to C++. You have to include the header file in which they are defined. So we'll do pound include vector, okay? So the definition for these things is in the standard template library, and that header file is vector, right? So once we have included vector, we can define them. So how are we going to define them? We're going to use data type vector and we're going to have this special notation with these angle brackets here. And we're going to specify what type of data we're going to store in our vector. So this is kind of like the data type you would have for an array. So for this example, we'll keep it simple and we'll just go with integers. Okay. So this is going to be a vector that holds integers and we're going to name the vector V. Okay. Now, when you start off with a vector, this is how we define it. Define the vector, okay? And then gain access to vectors by doing pound include vector. So now what we can do is we can add values to the vector. When you first create a vector, there's nothing in it. The size of the vector is zero, okay? And you can see that by invoking the size method returns how many elements are in the vector, right? So if I were to do C out V dot size, okay? And run this, then you will see, let's go ahead and run it. You're gonna see that the size of the vector is zero because I haven't added anything to it yet. Okay, so there's your zero. So let's add a couple of values to it, okay? So let's add a few values, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a method called pushback, okay? And what this method does is it adds values to the end of the vector, okay? So you can think of it as putting someone at the end of the line. Okay, somebody getting in at the end of the line. So we'll just say v dot pushback, and then we'll put a value in, okay? We'll put another value in. This time we'll put in six, okay? And then we'll put one more value in. This time it'll be seven, okay? So that's gonna put three values into our vector. So let's print the contents of our vector okay so we can use a standard loop to do this so something like four int i equals zero and then i less than well we know there's three values but because we called pushback three times but we can ask the vector just like we did before on line 12 how many values do you have in you okay then we'll do i plus plus and then we'll just display the contents of the vector. So we can do something like this. We can use that array notation that we are all used to. Okay, and then I'll move the cursor to the next line. So let's go ahead, compile that and run that and see that it works. Okay, so now you can see 867 because that's what we added to the vector. All right, another way, okay, you can access 
you can access elements of the vector in two ways. Okay, We can use array notation, as you just saw, or we can use the at method. Okay, So I'll have the same loop, but this time we'll use the at method instead. Okay, so I can do something like this. Right? And if I compile it, you're gonna see you get the same output. Is there any difference between the two? Not really. You can use whichever one that you feel most comfortable using. Okay, and you'll see that if I display the size again, okay, you're going to see that the size is now three. Okay, now you can remove values from the vector. Okay, you can remove values one at a time. To remove a value from the end of the vector, use pop back. All right, so push back puts a new value at the end of the line. Pop back takes that value out, removes that value from the end of the vector. So if we were to do something like this, pop back, okay? Then if I was to display the contents of our vector, we'll see that there's only two values. And by the way, we can use a range-based for loop with vectors, okay? So we can do something like this. Auto num v c out and num. Okay, and you know what? I'll put a space in front. Put it in front so that way you can see a little bit easier on the output. Okay. So ranged based for loops work great with vectors in any context. Okay, so now you can see there's only two values in there, eight and the six. Okay, now if you want to get rid of all of the values, okay, let's get rid of all of them at once. Okay, get rid of all of the values. Then you can use the clear method. Okay, so you can just do something like this, v.clear. Okay, and then you can um, see out the size. V.size, you're going to see that it's going to be zero. Okay, size equals zero. So it's empty. Okay, now before you access, if you try to access elements of an empty vector, your program will crash. Okay, so right now, if I tried to do something like this, if I tried to do something like v2 equals 5, okay, vector's going to crash because there, there's no elements. Its size is 0. Okay, if I want to get that 5 into the vector, right, I'd have to create a vector with enough elements in it already. Okay, which I'll show you how to do here in just a second. Okay, but if you want to make sure if you want to make sure that you're safe that that you actually have um, a non-empty vector then you can do something like this you can say if um, not v dot uh, empty okay use the empty method use the empty method to see if the vector is empty Okay, so if that vector is empty, oops, then there's nothing to do, right? We can't, we can't see out, for example, v of zero, right? Because it's empty. Okay, so since it is empty, right, this is going to evaluate to false, and we're not going to have a crash. See, and. In case that was kind of hard to see, then we can do something like this. Else, 
Uh, let's see how it's. Victor is empty. Oops. Okay. So let's go ahead and write it again. You'll see that says vector is empty. Okay. So now let me show you how you, you can initialize a vector in a couple of different ways. Okay. So we can create a vector. We'll call this vector u. Okay. And we'll just have it hold ints again, just to keep it simple. But you can use whatever data type you want with a vector, including data types that you create on your own. Okay, including pointers if you want. Okay, so we'll call this vector u. And what I'll do is I will put five in parentheses here. Now, if I do that, this will create a vector that is five elements long. Now, what is in the vector? I don't know, right? I don't know. It's just like if you created an array of integers and you didn't initialize it, you don't know what's in there, okay? But now it will be safe for us to do something like this. Uh, remember before we tried to do with the V and I was telling you we couldn't do V two equals five. Okay, well now I can. Okay, because there's enough elements created in my vector. Okay, so let's print that out. U2 equals what? Let's access it. Go ahead and run it. See u2 equals five. Okay, so that's a way that you can initialize your vector. Okay, now another thing you can do, you know, you can create. Well, I say initialize. Let me let me walk that back. It's a way that you can create a vector that already has elements in it, but you just don't know what they are yet. It's uninitialized. I'm going to show you how to initialize here in a second. Okay, so another thing you can do is this. Okay. We'll create vector w, and we'll do that again. We'll say um, five comma two, okay? Now, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a vector w that has five elements, and each of the elements is initialized with two, okay? So we'll see that right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and build that, run it. So see, it's going initial, it, it's initialized with all twos and there's five of them. Okay. Let me show you another way that you can initialize a vector. Okay. Let me make a little note here. Creates a vector of five elements, all um, containing, containing two. Okay. Now, another way you can create and initialize a vector is by passing the name of an already created vector to your new vector. So something like this, we'll say vector X and we'll put a W in there instead of an integer. So now when we do that, going to see that the new vector contains the exact same stuff as the old one. So it just basically makes a new vector with all of the other vectors items copied into it. Right? So that top line of 2222 that was the previously already existing vector, which was vector X and, or excuse me, which was vector W. And then the second line of two, 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 twos was the contents of our new vector, vector X. Okay. All right. Let me show you one more way to initialize a vector. And that is to use an initialization list. Okay. So I can do something like this. 
and we'll call this vector y, and then I'll put an initialization list, curly braces, and I'll do something like this. Okay. And then we'll print that out as well. And just to remind you that we can use the regular type of for loop, we'll do that. And then we'll see out uh, y dot at i. Okay. So take a look at that for loop, right? Let's take a look at it and see why I wrote it the way I did. Okay, so we set for in i equal to zero. So i is gonna start off at zero. And we said so long as i is less than y dot size. Now y dot size is gonna return the size of the vector. This is going to guarantee that you never try to read past the end of the vector and that you don't stop before the end of the vector, right? You're going to get all the way through. And then I used y dot at instead, just to show you, just to remind you that you can do it. Okay. You can use that array notation or you can use that at method, whichever one you prefer. It's up to you. Okay. So now you can see the eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine. Okay, now let's see how we can pass a vector as an argument to a function, All right? To do that, we'll write a couple of functions. One function will ask the user to enter a series of numbers, and then we'll have another function that will um, find the total of all the values in the vector, okay? So let's go ahead and start off by creating a vector in main. And we'll just stick with it using int as the data type, All right? And then we'll create a prototype for our, for our uh, function. So we'll say void get numbers, okay? And we're gonna pass as an argument a vector, okay? So we're gonna do that by putting in vector and then the type of data it's gonna hold, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to define our function. Okay, so void get numbers vector int. Okay, now there's something very, very, very important that we have to do. Okay, well, we have to name our, our parameter for one thing. I'll just name it A, but, okay, we want to modify or put the values into vector V, which we're gonna pass as an argument to get numbers. So what we're gonna need to do in order for that to work is we're gonna need to pass by reference. So we're gonna put that little ampersand there. We're gonna put that little ampersand right there. Remember with pass by reference, whatever you do to the parameter, you do the argument. So what we want to do is we want to push back on vector V, not on parameter A. So we need to do pass by reference. So here's what we will do. C out, enter integers, and type, I don't know, negative 99 to quit. We'll use a sentinel, okay? So we'll create a temporary local variable here. And we'll just call this in for input, All right? So then we'll type CNN. And so then we'll say while in does not equal negative 99. We'll take that value that we read in and we'll push it back into our vector. Which vector are we pushing it back into? Vector V defined in main because we're using pass by reference. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this C out and C in statement and put that in the loop. So that way we'll keep on getting new values so long as the user doesn't enter the sentinel. Okay. So that's what our function definition looks like to get our numbers. 
Now let's call the function. Okay, get numbers v. Anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument because of pass by reference, which is that symbol right there. So let's test it before we go any further. And once get numbers is done, we'll print out the contents of our vector. Okay, so let's see out. Um, I. So let's just test it. So in this way, I mean, the user can continue entering in as many numbers as they want because the vector can grow as it needs to, right? It's not limited in size like an array is. So we can type eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine, right? And now that we're done, we'll type, type negative 99 to signal that we're done. Okay, and um, it would be useful if I actually put saying I ignore here, so that way my prompt uh, or my uh, pause works. So we'll try it one more time. Eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine, and then negative ninety-nine. Okay, so there's our eight, six, seven, five, three, zero, nine. Now we can run this again. And this time only type in, you know, half as many numbers. Maybe we type in four, one, and five. And then we quit. Now it's four, one, five. So that vector is exactly as big as you need it to be. If we were using a regular old array, this wouldn't be possible, right? Because the array, once it's created, is fixed in size. A vector isn't. You can always add another value to a vector, all right? So now let's add the um, last function, which was going to be to total up the numbers. Okay, so we'll have it total up the numbers in return the total of all the numbers in that vector. So we'll call this um, find total. Okay, now I'm going to pass it a vector, and I want to show you that you can do pass by value. It's not a good idea. Um, in this case even, and I'll explain to you why in a second, and then we'll fix it. Okay, so their get numbers is done. So let's go ahead now and write our definition for find total. Int find total, vector int, and this time we'll name the vector b, why not, just to be different. Okay, we're gonna need an accumulator variable. So we'll call that uh, sum. Okay, so that's our accumulator. Don't forget to initialize your accumulator variable. And so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to add up all of the values in the vector. Okay, so I'm just going to use that range-based for loop. And this is another advantage of a vector. You can use a range-based for loop in a function with vectors. You can't do that with arrays because when you pass an array to a function, they degenerate into pointers. Okay, and pointers are pointers. They're a single variable. They're not containers like an array is. Or like a vector is okay so we'll just do something like this for num in b and then we'll say sum plus equals num oh and it would be useful if i actually put a data type in here huh okay and then we will return it turn sum and let's go back up to our main and then we'll say the total of those numbers is, okay, and then we'll call our function, find total, and we'll pass it vector v, okay. Let's go ahead and run it. Eight, six, seven, five, three, we're done, minus 99 enter okay those are our numbers that we entered in eight six seven five three i probably should put this on its own separate line the total of those numbers is 29 right is that right eight plus six is 14 plus seven is 21 plus five is 26 plus three is 29 so success okay 
Now, let's fix this so that way it looks a little bit better. And let me explain to you why it was why we used um, pass by value. Why using that is a bad idea. Okay, so remember, pass by value is pass by copy, right? So what that means is is that a duplicate of vector v gets copied into vector b. Okay, it's as if well, pass by pass by copy pass by value it's it's an implicit assignment statement it's as if we did something like that okay or maybe more accurately it's as if we did something like this okay creating a brand new vector and copying all the individual values from the old vector which is the argument to our new vector which is the parameter this is expensive and it takes time and there's no need to do that when we can simply pass by reference okay if we do pass by reference here instead and this is better then you're not making a whole new vector and copying all of that stuff okay but you're still accessing the same values right remember everything you do to the parameter you do the argument so we're counting up all of the values that were in the argument without having to create a whole new vector and copying it over. If you don't believe me, I will prove it to you. Okay, so there's eight, six, seven, five, three. Now we're done. And the total of those numbers is 29. Okay, works just the same, but it's more efficient. Now, pass by reference, anything you can do with the parameter or anything you do with the parameter, you do the argument. In this case, we chose these pass by reference for efficiency, right? But we want to follow the principle of least privilege, which is to say that the default should be that you give the least amount of privileges as possible. So find total, the purpose of that function was that of all of the values in a vector. Its purpose is not to make any changes to the argument vector at all. Therefore, we should make sure that that doesn't happen. So how are we going to do that? We're going to put this const keyword here. Okay. So what that does is that prevents you from being able to assign any values to the argument. Okay. You still have the benefit of pass by reference, but you can't modify the argument anymore. So for example, if we tried to do something like this, B of one equals three. Okay. See the red squiggle? because we made it a constant reference parameter. You are not allowed to modify constant reference parameters. So we get the safety of pass by value and the efficiency of pass by reference. All right, so there you go. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine and have any questions, please feel free to email me, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom. For all other viewers of the channel, if you thought the video was useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got that thumbs down button as well. Please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got paid memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month. We've got super thanks. Leave a comment. Let me know how I did. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell to be informed of when new videos are released. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.